Welcome to The Freelance Teacher. This is Doug Marola. Hope you're doing well. I want to talk to you a little bit about conspiracy theories and why they are valuable. And that may be a little bit of a strange topic, but I, I think it's important to talk about because I was listening to a podcast the other day and the host of the podcast was calling and it was calling people conspiracy theorists. He wasn't being overly malicious, but it was used as a as an adjective to put down the group he was talking about. And that's been very common of late, particularly with the rise of the internet in the last 10 or 15 years. Calling someone a conspiracy theorist, and you should be aware of this, is really used just to stifle conversation. It's a way to say, you know what, I don't really have a good answer. I don't have reason and evidence to knock down your position. So I'm going to call you a name. It would be like if they called you stupid, but a conspiracy theorist is, oh man, can you believe, it's supposed to be like in on the snark. Can you believe this person? He's a conspiracy theorist. It's really that kind of thing and it's evidence free and it's used a lot. So I was surprised kind of when I heard this, but conspiracy theories are value. And let me explain to you why. Uh, uh, and let me give you an example of my experience. I was uh, I, I was on break at work. This is probably 2000 and uh, probably 2006 or seven. I don't think it was 08. And and there was a video that was tangentially connected to 9/11 to September 11th. And someone in the this is a video on YouTube, and one of the commenters had had noted that. Um, uh, it was something about September 11th and the com one of the commenters noted that a guy named Bill Cooper had predicted September 11th. Now, I saw that and... I mean, come on, stop it, right? I mean, I've been... I, multiple college degrees, I read a lot, I'm historically aware, I like to learn, and... and I'm like, that's just mental. I, how could somebody even type that? And so I did look it up. And I think that made a big difference because I opened up a new window. The browser didn't have tabs in those days. And I looked up Bill Cooper predicts 9-11. And there was a long-term benefit. There were two very valuable things to doing that. And the really valuable one was the long-term effect. And the long-term effect was I I don't have to take what someone says as gospel. I, you know what? When a, an, a, a mainstream media talking head or a newspaper editor or a fellow teacher or a student, anybody says something, I don't have to believe it for any reason other than if it occurs in nature, right? Leaves are green. Yeah, I'm going to believe that. I don't need to go behind their back and look that one up, right? I mean, let's be for real. But anything told, I, I looked it up and, and it was amazing. And, and what it did was it inculcated in me that reflex and I started to look up other things that I had been told recently and or been told the previous 35 years. And you really start to wake up to stuff that's been told to you and you start to look at different opinions and different facts than the so-called facts you've been told about a lot of stuff. And that's become a long-term habit. And I always ask students to recognize patterns and build good habits and have these kinds of behaviors just baked into baked into the cake, just baked into the way you do things. And that long-term effect of looking something up that was absurd on its face has paid huge dividends. It's also, it's made me better at my job. It, it's made me better just, I think, as someone who's able to explain things to other people. And sometimes I don't have answers, but what I am able to do well, and you will too, is you'll be able to explain both sides or the three arguments or the various approaches to a difficult topic. You'll be able to do that well. And then you'll become a person of note. And you'll be somebody that people will look to to explain things to them, even if it's not the answer, it's here are the competing viewpoints or here are the things that I've read about and here are the names associated with those viewpoints. You really become a, a, an intellectual person who is someone who brings value to other people and you can teach and then you can also lead and those are rare skills. So I recommend that highly to you and for me the 
let's analyze the conspiracy theory thing is what did it. And it really woke me up. And I'll leave you with this last bit of warning. And I mean it as a warning. Once you wake up, you could never go back to sleep. Um, I know a lot of people that are like me. And I, and I feel like I was kind of asleep is maybe the wrong word, but just out of it, just kind of going along. And then, and then when you do something, when you, when you look up stuff that you're not supposed to look up, you are, to use the current term, woke or red-pilled, and you'll never go back to sleep. So if you don't, if you like being asleep, just stay asleep. But if you don't, and you want to take that next step, look up the stuff, look up the conspiracy theory, find out what they're talking about, however ridiculous. And then it's like an awakening and it's valuable. And I recommend it. I'm Doug Marola, freelanceteacher.com. Talk to you next time.